The sicha we're learning this week is the sicha of Shabbos Parshas Vos Chanan, Shabbos Nachamu, of the year Tov Shinun Aleph. The sicha could be found in Sefer HaSichas Tov Shinun Aleph, Chelek Beis, page 736. The Rebbe starts off the Fabrenian by saying that it's known that the Haftoyrois of the seven weeks between Tisha B'Av and Rosh Hashanah, known as the Sheva De Nechemta, the seven weeks of comfort, where we read the comforts of Yeshayahu, in these weeks. Now the reason why we read these Aftoyers are more connected to the time of the year that we are in, the things that happen in this time of the year. Not like the Aftoyers of the other Shabbosim of the year, where the Aftoyers is mainly connected to the Parsha. Nevertheless, even these Aftoyers are also connected to the Parsha. Why is that? Because we know that everything going on in any particular time of the year is always connected to the Parsha Sashavua. As the words of the Shaloh, that the Yom Toivim of all year round is, are always connected to the parashiyas in which they fall, because Hashem is obviously the one that set up Bahash Pratis each parsha in the particular time of the year. And therefore, in other words, even though the Aftoyrus seemingly are mainly connected to the time of the year and not to the parsha, but the Rebbe is telling us over here that these Aftoyrus are also connected to the parsha because the parsha itself is connected to the time of the year when it is read. In this particular case, Shabbos Nachamu, so-called because of the beginning of the Aftoyer, of Nachamu, Nachamu Ami, and this is the beginning, the head, which includes all the details of all of the other seven, the Nechemta, the seven Aftoyers of Nachamu. So clearly this idea of Nachamu, Nachamu is connected to Parshas Voes Hanan. Nachamu we always read by Voes Hanan. Shabbos after Tisha but we always read Parshas Nachamu and Parshas Vayeschanan. So what's the connection? So the Rebbe explains the point of the connection is that we know that the double expression of Nachamu, Nachamu Ami, this double comfort is for the first Beis HaMikdash and for the first Beis, second Beis HaMikdash. The comfort is going to be with the rebuilding of the third Beis HaMikdash by the third Geula, we are going to have an everlasting Beis HaMikdash, an everlasting Geula, after which there is no Golos. This is very much connected to the whole idea of Vayeschanan. Vayeschanan is about Moshe Rabbeinu Davening to go into Eretz Yisrael. And as it's known, that if the Yidin would have been Zoycha to go into Eretz Yisrael at that time, with the, rebuilding of, with the building of the Beis HaMikdash by Moshe Rabbeinu, then the Geula, the redemption at that point, would have been an everlasting one, and an everlasting Beis HaMikdash. So just like Nachamu, Nachamu Ami is about having the third Beis HaMikdash, the everlasting one, in a similar way, Voes Hanan, had Moshe Rabbeinu's tefillah been fulfilled then, it would have been an everlasting Geula, an everlasting Beis HaMikdash. However, says the Rebbe in Siv Beis, in Parshas Voes Hanan, is also emphasized that Moshe Rabbeinu's request was not fulfilled. As the Pasuk says, Hashem, Bilaman, Hashem was angry with me because of you and did not listen to me. In fact, Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, do not continue speaking about this anymore. Go up to the top of the mountain and look into Eretz Yisrael because you're not going to cross the Yardin. You should command Yeshua because he is going to be the one that's going to settle the Eden in Eretz Yisrael. In other words, Parshas Ves Hanan is emphasizing that the Poyol Mamish Entering Eretz Yisrael happened not through Moshe Rabbeinu, rather through Yehoshua. And afterwards there was a Churban and there was a Golos. As the Parsha itself continues, Kisoy Lidbonim, predicting and speaking about the time when the Golos is going to happen. And this is actually what we read on Tisha B'Av itself. So the question then is, how does Parsha's Vayashanan, which seemingly is more speaking about the idea of the Churban and the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu's request was not fulfilled, how does that fit with the Haftoira, which is about negating and nullifying the Churban and the Golos by the double comfort of the everlasting Geula and the everlasting Besamekdash. Now seemingly you'd be able to say simply that Parshas Vashanan is emphasizing the need why we need to have a double comfort by the Geula Amitiz Vashlema. Because there's a Churban, because there's a Golos, because the Yidin did not go into Eretz Yisrael with Moshe Rabbeinu, that's why, by Voes Hanan, we need to emphasize that we need a double comfort. Nevertheless, says the Rebbe, it makes more sense to say that not only the need for the comfort is emphasized in Voes Hanan, but rather the double comfort itself has a connection to Parshas Voes Hanan, as will be explained later in the Sicha. Says the Rebbe, in Siv Gimel, we can understand this, 
by first understanding the whole idea of what this Aftoyer, the first one of the seven Nechamois, is all about. This idea of Nachamu, Nachamu Ami, this double comfort. And the Rebbe explains. The connection between the Haftoyer and the Gula, in addition to the general idea that it's about Nachama and comfort, it also has to do because of the Koifel, because of the double aspect in it. The Nachamu, Nachamu, the double comfort. As it is known, that generally the whole idea of Koifel, of double, is connected and indicates on the Gula. As it says in the Medrash. In our Aleph base we have five letters, which all of them are doubled. Each one of them has two forms. And they are all expressions and connected to Geula. So these are referring to the letters that all are, fi- are final letters. So you have a Chaf and a final Chaf, and the Mem and the final Mem, etc. Each one of these, we also find a double expression related to that letter in connection to the Geula. And the Medrash explains the Chaf, we have a Chaf and a final Chaf, this, this double letter, is connected with Avram of Inus Geula. When he went out from Ur Kasdim towards Eretz Yisrael, he was told Lech Lecha. So these are a double expression, Lech Lecha, connected with the final Chaf, with a Chaf. Which a Chaf is one of those letters that have two variations. It's a double letter in the Aleph base. So Lech Lecha. And so too the Medrash goes on about the Mem and the Nun. And then the Rebbe quotes from the Medrash the Pei, the double Pei. So we have a Fei and a final Fei. The double Pei is connected to the Geula of Mitzrayim. As it says, pakoit pakadati. So here again we have a double expression related to the pay, which was the sign for the gula, pakit pakadati, that the Abishta says, I have remembered the Yidin. The tzaddiks are related to the gula that the Abishta is going to redeem the Yidin at the end of the fourth Malchus, at the end of Golus, this Golus. As the Pasuk says, again a double expression with tzaddiks, ish tzemach shmoi, o mitachtov yitzmach. A man called tzemach. Referring to Mashiach, when we talk of Yitzmach, and he will sprout. So, in other words, we see generally the Medrash tells us that the whole idea of double letters and double generally is connected to Gula. The Rebbe says this connection between double and Gula is also hinted in a famous pasuk, Kiflayim Lesushia. What does this word Sushia mean? So, there's a number of different explanations, but one of the meanings of this word Sushia is also from the word Yeshua. Which is the salvation, the Geula. So, what's the Pasuk saying? That Koifel, the idea of double, is, a, is a, an expression of Geula. What's the connection between double and Geula? So, the Rebbe explains, we can explain this very simply. When we say doubling something, Keflayim, actually includes not only twice as much, but also increasing more and more and more, and ultimately to a level of Bleakville. As we find many times in the words of the Razal, that the Razal learn out from a double expression of a Pasuk, that it doesn't only mean twice, but as the Razal say, that that comes to tell you that you need to do that particular thing that the Torah mentions twice, even a hundred times. That it doesn't mention examples over here, but for example in Tzedakah it says, or Pasoyach Tiftach, you should give and give again and give again. The Gemara says, Afilu mei upon him, even a hundred times. Or regarding about warning someone, Afilu mei upon him. So the Rebbe says, when we say Afilu mei upon him, that because the Torah said something twice, it means you need to do it even a hundred times, does not mean that we are limiting it to a hundred times and no more. We mean also much more. And what we are saying is that the number a hundred represents a certain shleimus, a certain full number, but obviously this expresses and this includes also that which is way beyond a hundred. And the Rebbe gives an example. We find Chayev Adam Levorech Meya Brachos Bechol Yoim. What's the significance of having to make a hundred brachos a day? Because a hundred is going to include all the brachos, all the ha'aris, all the good things that need to be nimshach from above are included in that number a hundred. Why the number a hundred? Because generally we know in a lot of places of Chassidus that the number 10 is considered a mispar shalim is considered a complete number, a complete unit. And as each one of the 10 include all the other 10 as well, as we know the concept of iskalalus, of each thing in Kedusha including all the other ones, so that's 10 times 10, so that's 100. So therefore, when we say 100, we don't only mean 100, but we also mean the way each one 
of these ten is included in one of the hundred. So that in other words mean how each one of the hundred is again times ten. And therefore that's a thousand. And so too as it's included each one of the ten in each one of the thousand as well. So that means ten times a thousand, which would be ten thousand. And in the Lashon Kodesh word for ten thousand is revava, which revava, the word revava, myriads or ten thousand, could also have the meaning of ribui, which means many. A multitude, and tachlus are ribui, the greatest multitude, shall you suffer meroiv, that cannot even be counted. In other words, what the Rebbe is saying, in summary, is that when we say this expression of koifel of double, and then the Razal go ahead and explain that double means even a hundred times. It's not limiting it to a hundred. A hundred just represents a very, very perfect number. But really, this a hundred really goes on and on and on, all the way to Bleakville. So in other words, the main point that the Rebbe is telling us over here is that koifel is really a hint to the idea of Bleakville. Now we can understand the connection between koifel, double, and geula, because this idea of koifel, of double, which now we said implies bleakvul, is connected to the geula amitiz vashleima, which when Mashiach is going to come, that's when the godly oir is going to be revealed. Which godly oir? The one that's completely unlimited, as in the expression of Kabbalah, so this, this refers to the gilu of the oir in soif, and therefore everything is going to be with the greatest perfection, starting with the Shlemus of the Geula and the Beis HaMikdash. It's going to be an everlasting Geula, and an everlasting Beis HaMikdash is going to be Bleakvul. Not like the first and second Beis HaMikdash, but the first and second Geula, that were only for a limited time, 410 years and 420 years respectively. Says the Rebbe in Seif Dalet, via Shleimar, this idea, of the bleak vul of the geulah ha'amitiz va'ashleima, which we just said is emphasized by saying things twice, by double, is even more emphasized in the double expression of nachamu, nachamu ami, even more than by these other letters that we said before, that because they appear in two different variations, the final letters are connected to geulah, but in nachamu, nachamu, it's even more so. Why is that? So the Rebbe looks at the examples that we mentioned before of double expressions in the Torah, which are connected to Gula. The first one is Lech Lecha. So Lech Lecha, we said, is a double expression or words that are similar and that it's repeated twice. Now here we have two words, Lech Lecha, that have the same letters. They both have a Lamed and they both have a Chof, a Lange Chof, a final Chof. However, the two words actually mean two different things. There's different Nekudos on them and they have a different content. The word lech means to go. The word lecha, even though it seems like a similar word, actually means for, your, for yourself. As the Rebbe brings from Rashi over here, that this is going to be for Avraham Avinu's benefit, for his own pleasure, for his own benefit. And it also includes, the Rebbe says, the benefit of the fact that he's going to be redeemed from Urkazdim. But the words lech lecha, even though they seem to be a double expression, and similar letters repeated twice, but they actually mean two different, two different things completely. So it's not really the same thing being repeated twice. What about pakoit pakadati? The next expression that we mentioned before, the one that was expressed for Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. So here both words have the similar meaning, both the expression of remembering, but here we have a difference in the letters and in the nekudos. We have pakoid and pakadati. They're similar, but it's not the same word. So pokoid is, is the shoyrish of the word, the root of the word. Pokadati is already an act. I have remembered. Or in pokoid yifkoid, I will re, he will remember. So the two words are similar words, but they're not identical. So too in the next one that was brought, tzemach and yitzmach. Again, the word tzemach is more the root of the word. Yitzmach means he will sprout. So in all of these examples, even though it is double expressions, but it's not the identical word, the word repeated in the identical way, rather it's two different, two different words, but they're similar. Where is in the koifel, in this idea of doubling of the word nachamu, we say nachamu, nachamu, there's absolutely no difference between the two words, not in the nakudois, not in the oisias, not in the meaning, they're both the exact same word repeated twice. What's the significance of this? that it's exactly the same word repeated twice, nachamu, nachamu, in contrast with the two words that are repeated but with a slight variation between them, like in lech, lecha, or in pokit pokadati. 
Says the Rebbe, we can explain it in the following way. When we have the word being repeated a second time, but different than the way it was the first time, that's basically showing that the two ways are in some way different. There's various different ways how this particular word could express itself. Or maybe there's a certain detail that wasn't mentioned in the first word that is being expressed in the second word, and that's why it needs to be clarified or added by changing the second word compared to the first word. In other words, the fact that the second word is being put there is telling you that the first word did not clarify the matter completely, and that's why there's another word over here. So in other words, when we have the word a second time, not only is this idea being strengthened by being doubled, but what's also being emphasized is there's actually a difference between the first word and the second word. That means that there's different oifanim. Let's use just as an example. The Rebbe doesn't go into examples over here. But let's just use the example pokoid pakadati. That means pokoid is expressing one aspect of this remembrance. And pakadati is obviously saying the same thing in different words. Obviously needs to clarify a different point. Whereas when you're repeating exactly the same word twice. Nachamu, nachamu. So here what we're saying is there was nothing missing or nothing different that has to be added in the second time than the first time. Rather, what we're focusing on is just the idea of double per se. In other words, the whole focus is just that it's being double, that it's being repeated. What does that tell us? In the connection to the bleakful of Gul, if we said before that the idea that something is doubled represents unbelievable, and this is connected to the idea of Gula. So if we want to connect, explain this in the context of Gula, in a case like pocket Pakadati, what the fact that it says twice, in, but in two different ways, would be emphasizing that there is different oifanim, there is different ways within the geula. For example, the general difference, there's a geula, the first geula, the first Beis HaMikdash, is a different kind of geula to the second geula, and the second Beis HaMikdash, each one has its own advantage, each one has what the other one doesn't have. So it's not the real bleak geula. In other words, we're focusing, this one has this detail, this one has the other detail. Whereas when we're repeating the word Nachamu, Nachamu, what we're emphasizing is we're having one thing, but being repeated again and again and again. So what's being emphasized and being noticed over here is the true bleakful. The Rebbe says this will become even more Geshmak and more understood based on a Medrash. The Medrash says that the Eibishter sent the Avois and the Nevi'im to comfort Knesset Yisrael, to comfort the Yidin. So they, they come back to the Abishta and they say, they're not interested, the Yidin are not interested in accepting comfort from us. As the Pasuk says, which we're also going to be reading in, one, in these Aftoyers, that the Yidin are this poor, um, yid, the Yidin, which are considered like an Ania, like a poor person, are not being comforted. So the Abishta says to Nevi'im, let me go together with you and we will comfort them together. And the Medrash says that's the Pshat Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami. The word Ami could also be read as Imi. Come comfort the Yidden along with me. In other words, you're right. It is only fitting that I myself, the Abishta says, should go comfort the Yidden. Says the Rebbe. This idea that the Abishta is going himself to comfort the Yidden is hinted in the Nachamu, Nachamu, this double expression of Nachamu based on what we said before. That double, and especially Nachamu Nachamu, shows on the real bleakful of the comfort of the Gula. So that, that's sh- the fact that it's doubled is showing that the Nacham is coming by the Abishta himself, who is the true and emissa bleakful. So till now, this, in, in this part of the Sikha that Rebbe is explaining, that the fact that Nachamu Nachamu is doubled is expressing a bleakful of the Gula, but what kind of bleakful? Indifferent when koifel, when something is mentioned twice, but differently, where there you're focusing more on the differences between, between each of the words. When you have the same thing repeated again and again, the main focus is that it's truly bleakful. Says the Rebbe in Sifhei, to explain this in more detail, that the bleakful aspect, the infinite aspect, within the doubling of Nachamu Nachamu, is not Chas V'Shalim coming to negate the individual um, advantages and qualities of the various different types of gula. Rather, all of the, those individual mylois, all of those individual 
qualities are actually expressions of the bligvul of the geula itself. In other words, the Rebbe is going to explain we're not going to lose out on those individual qualities, but rather we're going to have the bligvul of the geula, and automatically everything will be included in it. And the Rebbe explains. One of the simple meanings of Nachamu, Nachamu, this double comfort, is that the double comfort is for the first Beis Hamikdash and for the second Beis Hamikdash, as we mentioned earlier. There's a famous question asked on this in other Sikhs of the Rebbe as well. The Rebbe says we need to understand, since the comfort is not just by saying words to appease and to comfort and so on, but rather that the comfort is that the Beis Hamikdash is going to be rebuilt. If that's the case, what difference does it make that the comfort by the building of the Beis Hamikdash is on two destructions of the same Beis Hamikdash? In other words, what is being gained when we have the third Beis Hamikdash that it's a comfort for one Beis Hamikdash or that it's, there's two Bate Mikdash before? The bottom line is we now have the Beis Hamikdash. So the Rebbe explains that really each one of the Bate Mikdash are different in their character. Each one has their own advantages, and the point we're going to explain is that a third base on Migdash is going to combine all of the advantages. The Maila, the advantage of the first base on Migdash, wasn't a tremendous level of Gilealikus. In other words, that's more Mitzad Ha'elyin coming from the perspective, from the vantage point of the Abishter. In that way, it's greater. There's a greater level of godly revelation than in the second Beis Hamikdash. And the second Beis Hamikdash does five very main things missing from the Beis Hamikdash, especially the Oroin, which is considered the place where the Shechina rests. So that's the advantage of the first Beis Hamikdash, the Shechina, the Eloikus aspect of it. On the other hand, the second Beis Hamikdash, the advantage of it was more in its connection to the world, how it was set permanently into the world, that's more from the perspective of the Tachtoin from the world. Because the second Beis HaMikdash physically was great, was bigger in structure, a more beautiful and bigger structure, as well as it stood for more years. In other words, it was greatness in time and space, which are more connected to what our world is all about. So again, the first Beis HaMikdash is more about the Gilu Yalikus aspect, and that way it was greater. The second Beis HaMikdash is greater from the vantage point of the world. That is the Pshat Nachamu, Nachamu, the double comfort. A comfort both for the first Beis HaMikdash and for the second Beis HaMikdash. The third Beis HaMikdash we're saying is going to be a Bayis Meshulash, a house made up of three, meaning to say it's going to have the advantages of the first Beis HaMikdash and the second Beis HaMikdash all in the most perfect way. The Gilu Yelikus in the highest way. In other words, the, va- the idea, the advantage of the first Beis HaMikdash, that the Gilu Yelikus is going to be in the highest way. But it's also going to be in this physical world, in the most permanent way, in an eternal way. So that's similar to the advantage of the second Beis HaMikdash. But most importantly, combining both of those together, and that's why this is the third Beis HaMikdash, combining the two adva- the advantages of the previous one. Says the Rebbe, since these two types of comfort, for the first Beis HaMikdash and for the second Beis HaMikdash, are hinted in the words Nachamu, Nachamu, which we said these are two identical words, but which represents the real, real bleak vul. Says the Rebbe, if that's the case, also the double comfort for the first Beis HaMikdash and for the second Beis HaMikdash, which are two different types of Bate Mikdash, is in the way of true bleak vul, meaning to say, that the third Beis HaMikdash is the real and ultimate Bligvul, and because it has absolutely, absolutely no limitations, therefore it has the perfection of every possible idea, and that is Mitzad Elyon, in other words, all the advantages that you have from when something is coming from above, from the Gilu Yelikus aspect, and Mitzad Atachto, and from the way it is from the perspective of the world, and both of them together, and each one of these in a way of bleakful. Says the Rebbe in Sivov. Now we can understand the connection between Nachamu Nachamu, this double comfort, and Parshas Vaeschanan. One of the main ideas in Parshas Vaeschanan is again the idea of double. We have the Aseris Hadibrois repeated, even though they were said already in Parshas Yisroi, and now they're being doubled, they're being repeated in Parshas Vaeschanan. All the details of the Aseris Hadibrois which include, of course, all of Torah, are generally repeated exactly the same a second time. 
to explain this, says the Rebbe. One of the differences between the Aseris Adibris and Parshas Yisri and the Aseris Adibris and Parshas Vayeschanan is similar to the difference between the Luchais Rishonis, the first set of Luchais, when the Yidin were on the level of Tzaddikim, and the second set of Luchais, when the Yidin were on the level of Bali Tshuva. Why is that? Because the Aseris Adibris and our Parsha are coming in continuation and as part of the words of rebuke of Moshe Rabbeinu to Bnei Yisrael. So in other words, it's more similar to the idea of Tshuva. There's a certain problem and we're trying to fix it up. So this is the idea of the second set of Luchais. Or to put it in a little different word, similar to what we were just speaking about the Beis HaMikdash. The Aseris Adibris and Parshas Yisrael is mainly Mitzad Elyon is mainly coming from the Eibishter. The Aseris Adibris from Parshas Vayeschanan is mainly coming because of the Avoida of Yidin Mitzad Tachtoin. However, says the Rebbe, since in Parshas Vayeschanan, the idea of the breaking of the Luchos and the second set of Luchos is actually not mentioned, rather it's only mentioned in the next Parsha in Parshas Ekev, even though if you look at the order of things, it would have seemingly been more appropriate that the details of the breaking of the Luchas should come in continuation to the whole story of Har Sinai and the giving of the Luchas in Parshas Vayeschanan. Says the Rebbe, if that's the case, since in Parshas Vayeschanan it doesn't actually speak about the breaking of the Luchas, etc. Says the Rebbe, we could say that the fact that the Aseris Adibris are repeated in Parshas Vayeschanan is mainly coming to emphasize the bleakful aspect of Torah. Similar to what we said before, when something is being repeated, it's about emphasizing the bleakful aspect of it. And this is a connection between Pashas Vayeschanan and this koifel, this doubling of the Gu'ulo Amitiz Vashleim, which is the idea of Nachamu Nachamu, the double comfort. Because when is the real bleakful of Torah going to be in, revealed in its most greatest way? La'asid lovey, when Mashiach comes, when Torah Chadashim Iti Teitze, when there will be new dimensions of Torah coming out from the Abishter. More specifically, says the Rebbe, La'asid Lavoy, we're going to have the advantages of both the Luchas Rishonis, which is like coming from above, and the Luchas Shnis, which is coming mainly more Mitzad Tachtoin, and both together, similar to what we said before about the Beis HaMiglish, the Rebbe says this is also hinted in the specific words of Torah Chadashim, may Iti say that it's going to come out from Hashem Himself. And here we have, on the one hand, it's me'iti, it's coming from Hashem. But on the other hand, it's teitzi, it's going to go out of the Shamayim, come down here onto earth, into the understanding and comprehension of man. In other words, it's both the elyon, but also the tachtoin. But not in a way that there's different oifanim and different ways within Torah. In other words, emphasizing the differences between the elyon and tachtoin. Rather, like we said before, because of the lack of limitation, because it's going to be in a completely infinite way, therefore it will be the perfection in every possible way. Says the Rebbe, Ve'eshloimar, that in this way, the Yichud Nifla is also going to be in a much greater way. Just to clarify this point. Now, the Rebbe tells us in Tanya, and the Rebbe brings it in the, bra- in the parentheses over here, that when a Yid learns Torah, at that point, his seichel, his intellect, is grabbing the idea, surrounding the concept from every single side. And the seichel, his, his understanding, is completely clothed in the concept. So it works both ways. That the seichel, his brain in a sense, is grasping the idea, as well as being completely absorbed within the idea. So that's generally regarding Torah. But the Rebbe says this happens in the greatest way with the Torah Chadashim Iti Teitze that it won't be divided in two separate things. Mulmailo Lamato and Mulmato Lamailo. That is, Mulmailo Lamato is that the Abishter is the one that's giving the Torah first, so to speak. And Tan Lashonim Rasecha, and I repeat what the Abishter says. Mulmato Lamailo would be that I learn the Torah. And when a Yid learns Torah, the Abishter is learning together with him. So it's not going to be as two separate things, but rather the unity is going to be in the greatest way, in a way of bleakful. Again, that the bleakful of the Torah Chadashim Iti Teitzi is going to be in such a way that because of the lack of any limitation, of any of any Hagbalah, therefore there will be the Shleimus, there will be the perfection in all possible ways. Says the Rebbe in Sivzayi, in a similar way we could explain, regarding Moshe's request to go into Eretz Yisrael in the beginning of Pasha's Vayeschanan. One of the reasons why Moshe Rabbeinu's request to go into Eretz Yisrael was not fulfilled. 
As the Pasuk says, Vayoyim Rasha Meilai. The Abish just said to me, you will not go into the, uh, across the yarding. You have to command Yeshua, he is going to be the one settling the Eden in Eretz Yisrael. Even though entering Eretz Yisrael through Moshe would have been in a greater way than it was practically through Yeshua, it would have been an eternal goal after which there is no Golos. Is one of the reasons for all of this is, is because there is a certain advantage of the Eden going into Eretz Yisrael through Yeshua. The explanation for this is, Conquering and dividing the land by Yeshua is mitzad hatachtoin, is the idea that it needs to be worked on by the Yidin. It's not coming just from above. As is emphasized in the fact that the conquering and the division of Eretz Yisrael took a long time. There were seven years to conquer, seven years to divide. And even afterwards, after Yeshua passed away, there's still parts of Eretz Yisrael that weren't conquered. As it says in the beginning of Sefer Shoftim, by Yacharei Moshe Yeshua, after Yeshua passes away, the Yidin ask Hashem, who is going to now go to the Knani to fight the Knani? And the Eibishter says that Yehuda should go, Shevet Yehuda should go. And Yehuda turns to Shevet Shimon and says, come along with me and we will fight the Knani. And I will help, you'll help me conquer my part of Eretz Yisrael. I'll help you conquer your part of Eretz Yisrael. In other words, things were taking time. That is because when we're dealing with the Tacht and trying to transform this world, things take a long time. Furthermore, says the Rebbe, even after the full conquering and dividing the land of Eretz, in Eretz Yisrael the first time, Yidin were then sent to Golos from Eretz Yisrael. And not only the Golos Bavel, which was 70 years, but also the Golos afterward, afterwards, and mainly this last Golos, which is already close to 2,000 years. And what's the reason for all of this? Because the whole idea is to elevate the sparks that are in Golos. As the Razal tells us, The reason the Abish sent the Yidin amongst the nations is, which literally sounds like that we should have more converts, but as Chassidus explains, it mainly means the sparks of Kedusha, that we are elevating while we are in Golos. Or in the famous expression, to make from Chutzlar its inter its Yisrael. And finally, after all of our Avoida, in the time of Golos, by refining and elevating this world, we go inter its Yisrael, Begula Amitiz Vashleima, and then we will have both advantages of Moshe and Yeshua together, that is, as we said, the, from Mulmailo, from above, the godly aspect, but as well as the Yeshua, which is elevating the Tachtoid, and we will have the Gula Nitzchus, the everlasting Gula, after which there is no Golos, also coming from the Tachtoid perspective. If that's the case, we understand that Parshas Vayeschanan is emphasizing the, uh, the Maila, the greatness of going into Eretz Yisrael, but in the most perfect way, which was not through Moshe, in order that we should be able to have also the Maila of Yeshua. Similar to the idea we said before of Bligvul, Nachmu, Nachmu, the double comfort, which as we said before, because there is no limitation, that's why we get the Shlemus, we get the perfection in all possible ways, and simply that entering Eretz Yisrael, conquering and inheriting Eretz Yisrael will be immediately, that is, Shlemus Bizman in the most perfect sense of time, and regarding all of Eretz Yisrael, that's in space, in other words, not only a limited place, not only the place of seven nations, but also the, land, the lands of Keni, Knizi, Vekadmoini, the ten nations, and in a way of Kol Yeshve so that means also the perfection within Yidden. So we have time and space and Yidden, that all of the Yidden, all the Yidden also from previous generations, will be settling in Eretz Yisrael in a permanent way, in an everlasting way, forever and ever and ever. Says the Rebbe in Sif Ches, which is already the next section of the Sicha, in that which was discussed till now, that Shabbos Nachamu emphasizes the Bligvul, the double, within the Gula Amitiz Vashleima, we have something specifically this year emphasized when Shabbos Nachamu comes after the Erev Shabbos, when we have, we know the concept of Misha Torah Be Erev Shabbos, Yoichol Be Shabbos, when you work on Erev Shabbos, you have on Shabbos. So what was the Erev Shabbos, what was the preparation for Shabbos this year, was Chamisha Asar Ba'av, the 15th day of Av. What's so special about that? So the Rebbe explains, first of all, the connection between Chamisha Asar Ba'av, and especially when it falls out on Friday, to the Geulo HaAmitiz Vashleimah. So generally we know the idea of the 15th day of the month, the day that the moon is full, is a remez, is a hint for the Yidin's perfection, because they count to the moon and they are compared to the moon, they are going to be renewed like the moon, by the Geula Amitiz Vashleimah, David Malcolm Meshicha, 
which David, as we know, is also connected to the moon and spheres, Hamalchus, etc. The 15th day of the month of Menachem of, and the word Menachem, comfort, before of. So, the month of Av is, Menachem is the name of Mashiach. And therefore, this whole month is being called by the name of Mashiach, Menachem Shmoy. The 15th day, if we just said, means the perfection of the month, the full moon, represents the perfection of this month that's called by the name of Mashiach. And the month in which Mashiach is born, and therefore the special mazel of Mashiach is especially strong, as we know the Mashiach is born in this month on Tisha B'av. And when the moon is full, in the 15th day of the month, now we know with certainty that Mashiach was born already in this month. As the Rebbe points out in Order 83 over here, just like generally, the idea of the 15th day of the month came to clarify the things that happened on the 9th day of Av. We know that the Yidin stopped dying, but it was only certain on the 15th day of Av. So the Rebbe is saying in a similar way over here, Mashiach was born on the 9th day of Av, but by the 15th day, this is certain already. And this is the Chodesh that we know, the mazel of it is Ari Lion, in which the Arye, the Abishter, is going to come and build the Ariel, build the Beis HaMikdash. So again, the 15th day of the month of Av is especially connected to Mashiach. Especially when it falls out on Friday, the day that Adam Arishan was created. We know that Adam Arishan was created in the sixth day, the last day of creation, so that when he is born, when he sort of comes in, he should have the full meal, the full feast, everything in the world prepared for him. This is a hint to the sixth millennium in which everything is ready for that big su'udah of the Levyasan, the Shoyr Habar, in the day, the ultimate Shabbos, the Yom Shekul Shabbos, or Menucha L'chai Yoyelam. Says the Rebbe, V'yashloimah, that in all of these things, the fact that it's Chamisha, also the 15th day of the month, more particularly the 15th day of the month of Av, and the fact that it falls out on Friday, all of this emphasizes the Bligvul, this unlimited aspect, the infinite aspect, the koifel, like the double that we spoke about before, by the Geulah HaMitiz Vashleimo, which is expressed in the, shl- in the full Shleimos, when we have all of these things together. And the Rebbe explains the advantage of each one of these things. The idea of Kaimus Yerab so the idea that we have the 15th day of the month, the full moon. So we know that the Shleimos of the Levana, the perfection, the full benefit that the moon is going to have, is when it's receiving the light of the Shemesh, the light of the sun, Bishlemus. But the ultimate Shlemus is going to be when we have the two advantages of the sun and the moon, both together, when, as it's going to be La'asid Lavoy, when it says Vahoyo Oir Alvon, the light of the moon is going to be like the light of the sun. In regards to the idea of Hamish Asar Bav, we know that Mashiach was born the moment after the Churban specifically, as the Midrash Razal tell us, that when the cow made a noise once, moved one time, that was a sign that the base of English was destroyed. When it made a second noise, that was a sign that the Redeemer of the Yidden was born. But not only that, even after Mashiach has already sort of grown up, including, of course, grown up spiritually, as the expression regarding the first king, that he was from his shoulders upwards higher than everybody else, as all the dinim of a melech, how great he is, and so on and so forth, especially regarding Melech HaMashiach, that he's a Melech and a Rav, and yet the Churban and the Golos is going on for so long, but obviously the purpose of all of this is that there should be the Shleimus of the Gula, both, as we said before, from the Elyon and the Tachtin, and both together. And finally, says the Rebbe, in the idea of that it's on Friday, Akol Muchen L'Suda, that everything is prepared for the meal, the Shleimus of the Suda, of Yom Shekuli Shabbos, by the preparation of the Friday, with all the details, is again a shleimus of bligvul, as is emphasized also that on the Friday we have double toiv, which emphasizes the idea of bligvul. Just to point out an interesting ha'ara over here in Ara 93, the Rebbe points out of here that when we say that when Mashiach was born, noilad Moshiach and shal Yisrael, it doesn't necessarily have to only mean birth itself, but the idea of Leda could also be a reference to the Hisgalus of Mashiach. The revelation of Mashiach, just like birth simply, is about a child being revealed. Continuing now inside the Sikhi itself. Seif Tes. Says the Rebbe Vyeshlo Isif, this idea of Bligvul is also emphasizing the avoid of a Yid. Starting from Chamisha Sarbav, as the Gemara says, 
that from this point of time, the Moisif Yosef, which means to say from Hamisha above onwards, the, that the nights are getting longer. So the one who learns more Torah at night, life will be added, days will be added to his life, he'll have a longer life. Says the Rebbe, since all Yisrael are b'cheskas kashos, surely every Yid is doing the right thing. And fulfilling the mitzvah of Talmud Torah by setting times for learn Torah, as the halacha that's given to us in Hilchas Talmud Torah, it's understood that if we're speaking about a Hisafa in Limudat Torah, since already for sure every Yid is doing the right thing, so obviously we mean to now go out of all limitations. Or to use the expressions of the Pasuk and Parashat Shavua, B'chol mo'idecha, which means your bligvul, which is connected to the Abishta's bligvul. And this is the proper hachana for the Haisafa and the Torah in its fullest sense. In the real bligvul, when Torah chadashim iti when we're going to have new Torah, new aspects of Torah, new dimensions of Torah coming from the Abishta. And through this, we also have, as the Gemara says, the additional life, again in an unlimited way, the eternal life that's going to be when Mashiach comes. Says the Rebbe in Sif Yud, all of this is even more emphasized in Shabbos Nachamu, the day after Chamisha Asr Ba'av of the year, Haiti Nasi of Tavshan and Aleph. We spoke many times in, the recent, in, in a recent period that according to all the signs, we are in the year that Melech HaMashiach is going to be revealed. That is in addition to the calculation that the year Tavshan and Aleph is already Erev Shabbos Achar Chatzois. So that is just to explain before continuing. So we know that the thousand years could be divided into half, which would make it 500. So sometimes we say that 500 is Lachar Chatzois after midday. But if we count also that the thousand years has first a night and then a day, so then the first 500 years is like the night of the Friday. The second 500 years would be the day of the Friday. But after Tavshin Nun Aleph, so it's another 250 years past, so we're already into uh, past 750 years of the millennium. So now we're for sure after the midday of the Friday. So the Rebbe says, especially it's, uh, as it's hinted in the Russia Tavis, which is already publicized by all the Yidin, that Tavshin and Aleph is Hoyetesh, Nas Neflois, are in a year of seeing great miracles, especially that throughout this year we saw already and we will see more, many things that were miracles and wonders, and furthermore, each one of them is a wonder even compared to the previous wonder. Wonders on top of wonders, which all arouse new excitement, including the Pella, the wonder, that's happening these very days where there's a convention of Anash and Shluchim, Sheyichu, in Russia, that they gathered from many places, also from other countries of the world, in the city of Lubavitch, including to go and to daven at the holy tziyunim, at the holy oilim of Rabbi Seinu Nisiyenu, which that's where their holy resting place is, including also the holy tziyun of my father, of the Rebbe Levi Yitzchak, whose yard site, Yom Hilula, Esrim Boav, the 20th of Av, is getting the bracha from this Shabbos Kodesh, and in addition to that, they're getting together in the capital of the whole city, of the whole country, which is Moscow, in order to discuss together with love and unity to accept to add even more in spreading to the outside to the whole country and to the rest of the world says in the skin of this convention and in a double way the Moisif Yosef and in the greatest additions higher than all limitations that all of this is in a way of Neflois this is the most amazing wonder that very country that fought against the Pulois, against all of the activities of Kvayit Kedusha Smeri Vechami Admur Nesidereinu. And so too, against the activities of the one whose Ilulo it is on the 20th of, of the Rebbe's father, of spreading Torah and Chassidus to the outside. And yet this very country is now hosting and honoring his Talmidim and Shluchim and those that go in his paths and ways in spreading Torah and Chassidus to the outside. So all of these wonders that we saw already, arouse us and emphasize that immediately we're going to see the greatest pillar, the greatest wonder, the Gula Amitiz Vashleimah, regarding which it says, Ki meitzeis chameretz mitzrayim arenu neflois, neflois wonders, even in, compa- in comparison to Yitzhiyas mitzrayim. Especially that the Shabbos of Neflois, that in, within the year of Neflois Arenu itself. We're getting closer to the end of the year. We're holding already after the 10th month from Tishrei, the beginning of the year. We're holding in the 11th month, which is connected to the concept of Achad Osar Yoyme Chayrev, 
Achados of the eleventh, which is higher than the ten, which is Seder Ishtashlos, we're up to eleven, which is higher than Seder Ishtashlos. And also according to the count of the month from Chodesh Nisan, that if we would have been Zoycha, the Gula would have been in Chodesh Nisan, in which the Yidin were redeemed and are going to be redeemed in the future. Or at, the, at least in Chodesh Iyar, which is Rosh Tevis, Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, and Rachel, which is the four legs of the Merkava. Which Rachel, as we know, is the one that's crying for her children, is refusing to be comforted until the Abishta promises her that Shavu Bonim Lgvulam, the Yidin, will return to their borders. Or at least in Chaydish Tammuz, the Gula should have come, Chaydish Agula. And now we're already in the fifth month, if we're counting from Nisan. The month that's called the fifth, which as discussed in other Sikhs, is Achamishis Lapari, the level from which all greatest Oiris are revealed, where in Chaydish Menachemov, which it's Mazel Azari, and within this Chaydish itself, within this month itself, we're in Shabbos Nachamu, in which it starts the Nachamu B'Keflayim, the double comfort, K'Flayim Lusashia. The seven weeks of comfort. And we are in the second half of the month in which we start the preparation for the following month, the month of Elul, the very last month of Nefloi Sarenu. So if that's the case by now, surely and surely, there needs to be the Gula Amitiz Vashlema Kemetzeis Chameyaretz Mitzrayim Arenu Neflois B'Poyol Mamish. And take it from Yad in the midst of this very Shabbos Nachamu, the day after Tuba Av, which is emphasized the bleak vul of the Geulah HaAmitiz Vashlema. Says the Rebbe in Sif Yidal, B'Negei Elopoyol, practically. Since we're holding at the threshold of the Gula Amitiz Vashlema, in which we're going to have everything in the way of bleak vul, we have to have a taste on Erev Shabbos. It's supposed to taste from all the foods of Shabbos. We're supposed to taste this bleak vul of the Gula by adding in matters of Torah and Mitzvahs in a way of higher than limitations, going beyond our limitations. More specifically, adding and learning Torah, as we quoted from the Gemara before, he's supposed to add on the nights to learn more Torah. Both Nigla, the Torah, and Pnimi Yisat including the learning of Ein Yaakov, which is the Agoda within Torah, which is the Alter Rebbe tells us in Tanya, most of the secrets of Torah are hidden there. The Oedvik, or learning Pnimi Yisat as the Arizal, whose yard site Yom Ilulu was Ham, the fifth of Menachem of, that in these generations we are allowed, and it's a mitzvah to reveal this chachma, and especially after the way it's been explained in Chassidus, in a way that can be understood by each and every Yid. And a special emphasis on adding and learning Torah in matters of the Geula, both in Nigla the Torah, especially in the Sefer of the Rambam, which includes the Allah is also in regards to the time of the Geula, like Hilchas Beis Abchira, which we've just been learning in the three weeks. Also the Allah of Melach and Melach and Melach HaMashiach. So that's all the Nigla de Torah. So to in Pnimi Torah, that in addition to generally learning Pnimi Torah brings closer to the Gula. <coughs> As Rabbi Shimon ben Yechoi was told that with your Torah, with your Chibur, with the Zoya, the Yidin are going to go out of Golos Berachamim. There's a special advantage in learning those parts of Pnimi Torah, which explain the Gula. And better yet, that this learning should be in a way of a shayoshim, a tzibur, a minion should be sitting in a settled and permanent way, being involved in learning Torah, as the mission that we learn in the Perkyovis of this Shabbos and Perik Shlishi, which is also a hint of the Geulah Shlishi, in the base of Migdash Shlishi, that through them we get the double comfort for the first and the second base of Migdash. Says the Rebbe in Sefiud Beis. We could also learn a special les- lesson in connection to the Gula from the beginning of Perik Shlishi that says, Histakel which simply means you should look at these three things that the Mishnah is about to enumerate and then you won't come to do any Averis. But the Rebbe says, when it says, Histakel it just says plain, look at three things. This is also a hint that we should be looking at and thinking about the Gula Ashlishi, the third base Amigdash. And the, the third Geula, the third Beis Hamikdash, the triple Geula, the triple Beis Hamikdash, which, as we said before, includes the advantages of the first and second Geula and the first and second Beis Hamikdash, and both t- together. And his takel b'shloishadvarim, his takel means you're really looking carefully, in depth, with great, with great focus on the Geula Ashlishi and Beis Hamikdash Ashlishi. You're supposed to be looking at shloishadvarim. Again, this is a hint to the third Beis Hamikdash or to the third Geula. This is looking at it with anticipation, with yearning, with an extra special yearning. Anticipating and awaiting for Mashiach to come on this very day, especially that we're holding at the threshold of the Gula. So viewing this idea of Shloisha, this third Gula, this third Beis Amigdash, is in a much greater measure. Says the Rebbe, V'yesh Loimar, that by looking at the Gula Ashlishis and the Beis Amigdash Ashlishi, which we're calling over here, the Rebbe is referring to this over here. This is the Istakil, B'Shloisha Dvarim. This itself helps us that all of our Avoida in the three areas of Torah, Avoida, and Gmilus Chasadim should be in a more, more perfect way, which we do through our three garments of Machshava Dibur Omaisa. 
Because again, like we said before, when you have belig vul, it's not about the division of things and the separation and the differences between things, but rather because you have belig vul, automatically you have everything else included. So all matters of Torah and mitzvahs are taken care of. The Rebbe in Oro 134 also points out another interesting thing we said about the avoida of Torah, avoida gemilas chasadim, that we do all of that when we think about the geula shlishis, etc. But so too in the area of sur of staying away from the negative, the Rebbe says that when we are learning about the Indian Yonim of Gula, focusing of Gula, focusing on Yemoisa Mashiach, etc., etc., and thinking about how the Rambam says how all the delicacies are going to be like dust and they're going to be worthless and so on, that itself gets us that we don't have to be involved in negating the bad, etc., because automatically these things are negated by themselves. Says the Rebbe in Seif Yud Gimel. To add to all of this also, in connection to what we spoke about before, about adding a limud ha from the 15th of, of onwards, when we say shloisha dvarim, it could also be a hint for Torah, because we know the Torah is a Torah of three, and especially the Torah chadashim iti teitzi that will be revealed by the geula shlishis, that the preparation for that is by adding in Torah now, in a way of bligvul, from chamisha oser of onwards. According to this, we can understand what the Mishnah says is Takl Mishloisha Dvarim. That we're learning the day following Chamisha Asar B'Av, that even though on the 15th day of Av, surely everyone made Hachlotas and started fulfilling this idea of adding Limud Torah. Nevertheless, when it comes to Shabbos the next day, we need a Histakal, we need to examine ourselves again in our Hachlotas. And to add even more in a double way, and it should be in an appropriate way, in a proper way, fitting similar to the Geula, where we're going to have the bleakvul of Torah Chadashim Iti Teitzei, the Shleimus of the Torah of three, by the Geula Shlishis. Says the Rebbe in Sifidal Viratzoin, that from thinking about all of these in Yanam, about the Geula Shlishis and the Beis HaMiglish Shlishi, the Yistakal B'Shloish HaDvarim, we should come immediately to see the third Geula and the third Beis HaMiglish, practically B'Poyal Mamish, and take it from Yad Mamish, and simply, that in Shabbos Parshas Vayeschanan, Shabbos Nachamu, even before we go ahead and read by Mincha, the following Parsha, Vahoy Ekev Tishmon, which is specifically connected to our time, as it's known that Ekev also means at the very end of time, the Ikos of the Meshicha, which then, as the Pasuk says, Vahoy Ekev Tishmon, which means then, of course, you will listen and do all the mitzvahs, all the matters of Torah and mitzvahs through Machshav and Dibur which is also hinted in the Shleish Advarim. So immediately you'll be fulfilled by Kasha, the request of Moshe, who is the Goyal Rishon and the Goyal Achrin. That Ebra, I want to go into the land and see the good land, the Hora Toivazel, which is Yerushalayim, and Levon, which is the base of Migdosh. That Moshe Rabbeinu, with all of his generation and all of the Eden and all the generations, together with all the Eden and this generation, with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters, with Nasi Doireinu at our head, will go and come into our holy land in Yerushalayim, Irakoidesh. And the Hara Kodesh in the Beis Hamikdash Ashlishi, there we will celebrate the Simcha Sagula with the greatest Simcha, even greater than the Simcha's Beis Hashayva, regarding which it says that someone that did not see the Simcha's Beis Hashayva never saw Simcha in his life. And to use the words of Chazal, the end of Mesech Tatainus, in continuation to the uh, to the Gemara of Loihoi Yom Tovmu Yisrael Chachamisha Asher B'Av, the Gemara says the Eibush is going to make a big circle for the Tzadikim, a big for, for the Tzadikim lost in love, the Eibush is going to be sitting right in between them. And everyone's going to be pointed with their finger, and as the Pasuk says, the Amar Bayeimahu. On that day, it will be said, Hini Elokeinu said, this is the Eibushter who we've been hoping for, and he's our soul, he's the one helping us and saving us. Ze Hashem Kivinulei, this is Hashem that we've been hoping for. Nagilav and Ismachabishu Asai, let us rejoice in his salvation.